Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I've got a kind of fun video. So our main Righteous Fire character in the league is currently level 98 and he's pretty decked out and I know that's kind of far for most of the, most players. So we decided to start working on the new Righteous Fire, also known as Arf, Arcane Righteous Fire. Um, so we're in the leveling process right now and I wanted to kind of show you guys how this works. It's kind of nuts right now. Although before people start, do know that the end game version is going to be quite expensive for the initial payment. So I can't really talk about all that stuff yet. We're, we're kind of ironing out all the kinks right now, but let's get started. So a lot of this stuff might, may look daunting, but pretty much everything I have is only a couple of chaos. Uh, I think my weapon might be 10 chaos. It's just like a fire multi mana wand. You know, there's a lot of different things you can find here. We're using a four link cloak of flame, not an ideal piece. It just gives a lot of fire res. Honestly, I just pulled it out of my stash. Main thing to talk about here though, is the mana stacking. So we're currently at 1700 mana. And for people who are unaware or don't know, the Arcane Righteous Fire does not burn your mana. It burns your life pool based off of your mana pool. So the higher your MP, the more your, your degen, right? So currently our end game version is gonna have a lot of energy shield. Right now we're not in the energy shield variant. That's a bit later, so for a different video. Right now what we're gonna talk about is how much damage it's actually doing. It's kind of disgusting. So there is one thing I have here that's a bit expensive, which is my Brutal Restraint. You do not need this at all. I just plugged it in. The only reason I plugged this in is because I'll be automating my flasks with a trader later so we can utilize Coruscating Elixir. Again, later, it doesn't really matter. Um, if you don't have this, you could literally just use a Thrill Thirst for Perma Onslaught, right? doesn't matter. We're running on a four link. So I've got Burn Damage, uh, Righteous Fire of Arcane Devotion, Elemental Focus, and Control Destruction, right? Um, the Shav's Revelation is actually actually only a couple of Chaos right now. Uh, the purpose of this is if you look at my MP pool, 1700, it gives so much MP, it's ridiculous. Later on, we'll also utilize the Energy Shield regen, but that's not important right now. Then we just have some standard RF leveling gear, right? So Kikizuru Ring, Spring Leaf, I'm using Wanderlust, some random Belt of Deceiver. We'll upgrade from Belt of Deceiver to Immortal Flesh soon. Um, Dodre's Gloves for 100% increased spell damage. Basically all the goodies here. Still have a decent amount of life regen on our actual uh, life pool, not a lot. There are other ways to level this, like with mind over matter and stuff, but that's not what I'm doing. I'm kind of pivoting right into the low life version. So this is kind of what we have. The main deviation is coming on over here to grab the fire mastery so we can benefit from the big life regen. You also can use stuff like I'm using a replica Karui ward, uh, mainly for the AOE and movement speed. You can alternatively run something like a replica Azuri's foible for huge life regen to help with the sustain um same thing with regular adzeri's foible if you want more damage because it's big mp and then you could just anoint like hardy with that being said let's go get started let me show you the arf leveling process so currently our arf is rocking a solid uh 17 000 damage per second on a four link um yep totally not busted nothing to see here everything is absolutely fine working as intended yep mm -hmm. can't wait to see what a six link arf does one of the cool things about this build is you do not need to have a single target um later on we will pivot into using what's known as an indigon and indigon we will essentially make it so that we are hopefully hopefully recuperating our mp through taking damage and mp on kill and then that way we can have some decent indigon stacks while still having the normal you know, walking or shield charge play style. So I'm very excited to see kind of how that gets going. So far though, I gotta say the leveling, I thought it was gonna be a lot more difficult to get set up. Shut up Templar, I'm talking. Okay, I thought it was gonna be a lot more difficult to level, but it's really not. It it, it honestly just breezes through the campaign right now. Um, currently my life pool is a little bit low and that's why on my first ascendancy, I decided to take the minimum power charges and endurance charges. The minimum endurance charges help a lot with this setup because they give me an extra 16% physical mitigation, right? So that's what we're doing now. And then we'll just be taking some extra life nodes. The life nodes are fine because when we go ivory tower later, we're going to want life so that we can reserve it. But I just wanted to give you guys a sneak peek of the leveling process. It's kind of really cracked, right? So we're just going to kind of just go a little bit further and kind of show here. As for where the AoE is coming from... We have 60% total AoE. So the 60% AoE is coming from Replica Karui Ward, giving us 30. And then on our tree right now, we just have an extra 30 located right there. 
yep so that's pretty much about it hope you guys had a wonderful time hope you guys enjoyed yourselves if you did feel free to like share and subscribe and don't forget to catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box if you guys wanted to see some more arf content see you guys all tomorrow